What's up manga fans and welcome back to another review of Attack on Titan this month's chapter 71 Bystander. Now I had no clue this chapter came out a week ago so I apologize if this is late if anyone's even watching this but yeah I saw it on Manga Stream Manga Reader today so to me this is um, you know the review coming out on time and this is fresh to me but regardless um, I thought this was a very enjoyable chapter it wasn't the most you know fast paced like we've seen with the other ones the plot didn't advance but that's understandable because it didn't need to this chapter was dedicated to Keith Shadis, Grisha, um, Carla Grish, um, and Eren yeah so it was pretty much a backstory and delving into histories and origins um, to an extent and the particular origin that's making me more intrigued is Grisha I'm starting to think that his origin was definitely not in the walls. He most likely is a titan from outside the walls. It just seemed like he um, wasn't a normal human from the way he was acting, how he was so curious and in intrigued by you know human re um, actions and the way they lived their lives. So I can imagine he most likely came, well, was an associate of the big ape, um, the titan ape sorry and he probably came from the same village that um Rainer, Berthold and Annie came from it just seemed like he was kind of you know the opposite of someone like Eren who wants to know what it's like to live in the outside of the walls what it's like out um, there he's most likely thinking the same he wants to know what it's like inside the walls so he kind of escaped and most likely made his way to the walls and now he's finally there you can see what's going on but he is very involved with Keith Shadis more than we thought. I didn't think Keith Shadis was anything important other than just to be that kind of military guy that um, brings in the new troops and pretty much um, boot camps them from for the five years that they're obviously um, learning to basically be soldiers. But he's he knows a lot, a lot more than he um, was letting on, or a lot more than you know the series made us think. And 20 years ago, he was the one who actually met Grisha when um, he was outside the walls as one of the scouting legion. And when he met Grisha, they both was confused. It's like, what are you doing out here? It's like, you're not meant to be out here. And they and Grisha was saying the same thing to Keith. So he took him in and obviously introduced him to the life within the walls. Grisha had many questions and he was, um, he was very, I'd say, passionate about his beliefs, how... He made Keith believe that he was one of he was an important person. Like him thinking to live outside the walls and you know his reasons for going outside the walls, being part of the um, the scouting legion, was good. So from then you would think that was a positive thing to say to him, but really that was a downward spiral for Keith Shadis, and his life kind of just became crap. And we even get the first introduction between Grisha and Carla um, back then. And I actually had to look twice and I was like, oh yeah, that's Aaron's mum, Grisha's wife. So we see her in her younger days and she was a bit more, I'd say, bash, um, not bashful, I'd say more, she was more blunt and aggressive back then, especially the way she was cursing both of them for thinking foolish dreams of, you know, joining the scouting legion and going outside the wall. But, you know, as time goes on, Grisha becomes a doctor. He doesn't really remember much about himself and everything, but he's he does say he remembers being a doctor and he becomes one of them and later on there was like a plague in, you know, Shinga Shina and he um cures everyone, including Carla. And Shadis apparently was in love with Carla, as we see the obvious signs, but Carla eventually became infatuated with Grisha and sooner or later they became married. And Keith was obviously very bitter about this. Even on the wedding day, he kind of just walked off and he was obviously um, feeling heartbroken from that. But eventually, um, there was like, there was actually a moment where he was thinking about, um, you know, how they're getting scolded by all the upper, you know, the higher ups and the rich. Like, oh, all you do is go out and get people killed. Why don't you use um, those men to good work and pay us back for all the money and lives and everything you've wasted? And eventually the commander who Keith was under, he despised him because he was he just saw him as weak and if Keith was in charge he believed he would be much better. And eventually that became true when the commander was killed and Keith um became, you know, the new commander but of the survey courts. But things weren't really great for him either. 
Um, people were dying more often. He was more aggressive with his attack patterns in comparison to Irwin, who was more tactical. And every time they come back, the losses were humongous. It was ridiculous in the amount. And one day when he's coming back, he sees Carlo and she has a child um, who obviously is Erin. And it was actually quite a bad meeting for them because when they met, you know, Carlo was like, how long are you going to keep doing this? Are you going to do this until you die? And um, Keith was really aggressive towards it. He was like, he more or less just said, you people, you're normal people. You're just happy with living inside the wall. You wouldn't understand what I'm trying to do. Only special people like me would understand what my plans are, what I'm trying to do. And obviously, you know, um, he pretty much told her that you're just going to live this crappy life while I'm, what I'm striving for is something you can't understand. And that's basically living outside the wall. But um, even though he had those beliefs, eventually he lost um, too many people to the point where people start to distrust him. Erwin was more um, favoured by everyone, especially when he, with his, you know, the um, scouting legion pattern that they had for the horses that we see later on so eventually Keith resigned and Owen became the new um, um, commander and then War Maria we flash forward to when War Maria fell and Keith was found by Grisha um, when they were fleeing from the Titans so um, they both were looking for Carla but unfortunately you, we know the story for that they find Aaron and Aaron tells that Carlo was eaten by the Titan. So Grisha takes his son to the um to the forest and Keith was trying to follow, but he was like, This is none of your business, you know. Aaron is gonna be the one to take revenge, not me. He's going to definitely do this, he's special. And we know the following thing, we see the lightning and Aaron is transformed into a Titan by eating um Grisha. So when Keith arrives, he only sees um Aaron basically lying on the floor unconscious. And he takes him back and puts him in, in the shelter and leaves. And um, in the present, Aaron asks, is there anything else, um, you know, he knows. Um, and um, Keith said that was pretty much all he knew. That is literally all he knows. But to uh, to me personally, that is, says more than enough about what's going on. So um, it's funny because Keith was kind of, I'd say not an anti-hero, but he was very... Um, pick particular with his actions when Aaron finally made it into you know the um the soldiers part of the training um Keith tells Aaron about you know Carla's last words to him and he basically says that he doesn't need to be special he's not interested in uh she's not interested in Aaron becoming a special man or anything the fact that he was born in this world was great enough for him so Shadis kind of takes it on himself to um you might as well say stop um, Aaron from basically you know becoming part of the the scouting legion or anything like that so he was the one who actually sabotaged um, Aaron's gear so that he wouldn't be able to progress forward but when he sees how um, strong-willed and uh, determined Aaron is like he obviously changes his mind and gives him the replacement that we see so in a way he was kind of being that he has to be that bad guy that um, you know would stop Aaron from reaching these dreams. But when he sees that Aaron is indeed special and will become something important in this world, he obviously holds back. So that was more or less it in terms of the flashback. It just shows, um, it was just adding more to, you know, obviously the past of Grisha, Aaron's, um, you might say, origin and history and the fact that Shadis was very involved in this. So the only thing um, I can say that we can get out of this is obviously Grisha's origin and we'll probably find out there's more in his basement is probably to do with things like you know the cure for the plague there might be all of his life work in there and just other experiments he's been tinkering with so yeah that's more or less we can talk about in this chat so it was very um enjoyable um in terms of you know information we're given and i can't wait for the next one so if you got any opinions um because i've got nothing else to say leave them in the comment box below and i'll speak to you guys next time take care